Welcome to the course, Digital Storytelling. My name is Luca Peskoretz. I'll open an example for today. Okay, unfortunately, when you use rendering, when you use V-Ray in Rhino, the, somehow the number of, um, <laughs> uh, the number of um, uh, panels that kind of increases. So they're kind of all squeezed everywhere, unfortunately. But uh, I'll try to keep it simple. So um, uh, yeah, this is kind of, what, this is a example scene that we will try to reconstruct. So this is basically a model in Rhino. And here I'm using a rendered view. So um, yeah, also in this tutorial, I will actually assume that you know already a little bit of Rhino. So we'll not go into basics of it, but I will, uh, I will assume that you kind of already en en encountered it before. Okay, uh, I kind of created like a room here. I go here under shab, uh, shaded, shaded, yeah. You can sort of see how the room uh, looks like. I kind of try to model something a little bit and you can kind of enter inside and uh, you can also switch then the, um, the view to rendered. And I try to set up some uh, materials uh, and then basically we can use this as a basis to do, uh, to do a, uh, like a photorealistic render at least the kind of first try of it. Then of course, this is all kind of just concrete. Uh, you can also switch here to Arctic mode, for example. So you can just see basically just the geometry. And um, yeah, uh, if I go here under view, set view, I have already a camera set up that I'll show you how you can do it. So you can always go back to some uh, vantage point or some view that you like. For example, this one here is like a, some, like a central view. And then I can switch it to render to show how the materials look like. But basically, uh, this is just a preview, uh, like a render preview. And then from here, I can then start rendering and then I can get results. And I'll show you just some results here. Uh, again, they're rather simple. So let me just find some of them. Okay, this is the room. Um, it's actually a bit different model than I used before, but uh, basically, you can get this kind of uh, results from it. I think this is the. Yeah, this is the result. So basically, you can um, yeah, you can sort of render uh, the scene. We sort of set up the light coming in, uh, materials. Maybe this is a bit very dark, but again, I will show you how you can then in Photoshop sort of adjust things. This is the same version, but uh, with a cube kind of glowing a little bit. And uh, yeah, this is just a simple one without any materials. Um, okay, yeah, these ones are also nice. Um, this one is with noise, so you can render faster, but then you have this noise and then the noise can be smooth, smoothed out uh, later. Um, but depending on kind of, um, if you want to sort of uh, just quickly see the result, then you can also do it with noise. Uh, it's a bit faster, or then later we can do a final version that where this noise is smoothed out. Okay. And I have actually some other uh, examples here. So it's like a stone arches. So this is again, the rendered view or the kind of the actual render. It's like a series of arches. It's this model in Rhino and it's just set all to sort of concrete. And then when you go on, uh, you can also do from Rhino, just like basically high resolution screenshots. So that's much faster, but um, maybe less nice. Some questions here. Okay, what kind of render options do you use? Okay, so I will show you, we'll go step by step and I'll show you basically um, how to set up everything. So as I said, I'm not really an expert um, in rendering because uh, I don't really do it that much. Um, basically, usually if, you're, um, if you do this over and over, then, then you would have like a scene set up with all the settings, everything would be set up and you would just put a different model uh, with different uh, materials. And th then you can move really fast. You can do kind of uh, fast versions, but if you don't do it that often, then you have to sort of set up everything from scratch, then that takes a bit longer. So again, experience here actually matters a lot. So I'll show you a little bit kind of how you can do it from, uh, from scratch. And I'll show you how to do these, um, these examples maybe. So this is uh, I think Arctic mode. And then um, this I think wireframe, this normal shaded mode. And this is a so-called technical mode. So the hidden lines are dashed. Um, yeah, some kind of different sort of versions that you can uh, extract. And then basically these you can also use, um, I can show you how you can basically use these uh, 
also in Photoshop, uh, basically to kind of, um, um, you can almost use these ones as a sort of a grid uh, in Photoshop to sort of, um, you know, um, do collages with, or so if you know a little bit of 3D modeling, a little bit of rendering in Photoshop, you have actually quite a powerful workflow where you can do uh, different things. Okay, so there's, those are just some examples. I was also experimenting, I have a model of um, Pantheon, unfortunately it didn't work out so well when I did experiments today, so I decided to maybe uh, not do it. Okay, so I will, um, I will maybe create a, a completely new, um, open completely new file. This is in millimeters, so we have to be aware of that. Uh, and I will just set it up. So here quickly, we can do like a small model and let's, let's, model, um, uh, let's model a room or, so um, here in settings in Rhino, I can just, uh, just change a bit the grid here. Okay, maybe the, we leave this grid. Okay, so I want to create my room. So I'll do that kind of quickly. Uh, again, this is in millimeters. So I'll try to reconstruct the box that I had before and press zero. And then maybe a room is um, uh, um, 20,000 millimeters by 10,000 millimeters. This is 20 by 10 meters. And then maybe, you know, minus one meter. So I guess like a slab, it looks a bit like this. This is now by default in, uh, in Rhino, this is always in kind of wireframe mode, but I can switch here to shade it. And I'll just save this. So it's gonna be, uh, Rhino model, and I'll just put today's date, 2103.25, and I'll call it a <clears throat> simple room. <laughs> okay, 25, yes, okay. Okay, so this is kind of the floor of our room. Mm. Now I can create walls in different ways. Um, <clears throat> Maybe the most uh, straightforward way is um, um, well, I can kind of uh, create like a rectangle here. Then I can type in offset, um, some distance. Uh, it doesn't have to be very big. So distance is maybe 20 centimeters. Um, and I can offset this toward the inside. Hop. Okay, so we're kind of a thin wall. Uh, then I can create a surface here by uh, going here just a minute. Um, here, planar surface from two curves, this one and this one, up. Okay, I actually don't need this curve, so I can just select select curve and just delete them because yeah. then I select this surface here and I can extrude it. Extrude and then there's a extrude surface here and uh, maybe the height of my room, uh, maybe, yeah, I think 5,000, so that's five meters is maybe fine. Okay, so we get something like, like this. If you're bothered by these uh, ISO surfaces, um, sorry, this is kind of a, uh, like, what is this? this? This kind of lines in the middle of the surface, these are called ISO surface lines. If you select the object, go here under properties, you can, um, you can remove them here, uh, show ISO surfaces, uncheck that, and then uh, it's kind of a cleaner, uh, cleaner part, okay, and then we are just going to do the roof at the same time. So I can just say copy this bottom slab, go all the way up, and uh, uh, um, um, and actually I want to um, okay, I want to do it like this, put it like this, and then I want to scale it. I can say scale one D. So I want to kind of shorten it. There are different ways again that you can do this sh shortening, but scale 1D just makes it squeeze it here and then scale 1D again, uh, squeeze it from here to maybe something like this. So we're gonna leave some light to come in. Okay. Uh, with ZS, you can always kind of zoom in on your object. Okay. And uh, so that's kind of my room. And in the example I had, um, I'd like a cube or so I can again do a box um, and maybe it's one by one meter. So a thousand, thousand actually I press enter. I think it's gonna take the same size. Okay, so it's a one by one by one cube. I can go M to move it from this midpoint to maybe somewhere here. 
this is the mid, okay. And uh, I can just kind of insert it in a little bit like this. Okay, I will actually just do two of them here, one on the top of the other, just copy them. Okay, and now I want to set up my camera. Uh, so again, if you're bothered by the roof, we can temporarily move it. Uh, if I select it, I can just say hide. And uh, now I can kind of set up my stuff. So this is now two meters. Um, I can draw a line that goes maybe from here. Um, actually, let me just do just a minute. Uh, I got the question in the chat, which I will address in a second. So I want to create like a axis for my camera. Uh, so maybe a start point is going to be somewhere here and uh, the end point is going to be somewhere there and maybe I will just uh, move it to here. So I just want to move this line and we just I'll read the question just a minute. Okay, so maybe this is the, okay, so this is my camera. Uh, my camera is going to look into this uh, direction. So it's like a central perspective. I think this is one and a half meters height. Um, yeah, in this five meter high room. Okay, let's see actually what the question was. Okay, how can we make the corners round? Um, uh, yeah, there are different ways. So um, again, I don't want to really explain too much about uh, modeling, but um, you can um, you can extrude. You know, if I have a, let me just see if I, yeah, if I have a. You know, rectangle here, and I do you know offset. Uh, I offset it in. Now I can do a fillet. Fillet. It's also here somewhere. Uh, fillet curves. Uh, so, and then the radius uh, maybe maybe um, ten centimeters, and then you can just click on a which space where you can repeat the command. You do this, and maybe you just do the insides. Okay, now, uh, so you with the filler, or make it also outsides. So with the, this filler, you can sort of select uh, two sides of this corner and it will round it up. So the radius is now, um, the radius here is uh, 10 centimeters. And now you can go from here or so from here, I can say here, create a surface from planar curves like these two hop. Um, this one I delete. This one I delete, and now this one you can say extrude surface, and you can go up maybe 1000 in this case. Okay, so same thing. This. Okay, so now you got the same thing, but this is this is rounded or so it's yeah, it's exactly the same thing. You could probably round uh, this solid as well directly. There are different ways of if you go here on the solid tools, there are many uh, options that you can use to also make holes, for example, in solid or around or the uh, corners directly on a Kind of solid geometry, uh, so those are for sure useful. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll leave this guy outside. Okay, let's go inside. Um, so Ryan is great for modeling. Um, it'd be really fast. Okay, so now I will also set my camera. So this axis, I'll pretend this axis is my camera direction. So if you go here under set camera, um, place camera and target, I think. New camera location here, uh, beginning and the end is here. Okay, so now we are here and now you can also say, um, you want to save this. So you can go here under uh, set view, named views, and you can just save this as a save as, as um, you know, uh, room from center. Okay. So now if I move around and if I go back here, I think I'm not sure if I can click, right click, yeah, right click and then um, set view. And if you click here on this room from center, this named views appeared here on the bottom, it will kind of go back to that, um, to that place. Okay, uh, and uh, this direction, we can just kind of, mm, yeah, we can just delete it, we don't need it. Okay, and now I'll, bring back my roof. So uh, roof was hidden, so I can just say show. And here it is, it's kind of back. Okay. Um, so now let me go again, set view room from center. Okay, I'm here. And um, 
if I go here under, for example, go from shaded to Arctic, you can see kind of how my uh, view looks like now. I can also go here to wireframe. Okay, actually, I just realized that I will, uh, let's delete this. Okay, so first I want to show you how you can export these views directly from um, from Rhino. So without really rendering them, but you can export them in high resolution. Mm. So I'll show you that <clears throat> first. Uh, first, actually, again, let me set uh, appearance, colors, background, maybe to white, because it's gonna look a bit nicer. Okay. And I go again here, uh, set to you, room from center. Okay. So let's start with the uh, wireframe. So let's say I want to export this. This is of course not very nice because I also see these um, this kind of thickness um, thickness of the slab. So if you you know explore your model and just leave the surfaces, then you these these lines will uh, sort of disappear. You will just get kind of the lines of the room. But let's say I want to uh, export this, so without rendering. So this is easy because that's kind of what the Rhino is already showing you. There's an option called View Capture the File. And you capture the file basically just takes this um, same viewport. You can kind of then choose a thing here. Uh, view is this one here, and uh, this is the resolution, so it's quite high. Press OK, and now I'll just export it as um, um, this is the simple room. So I'll just call it, um, you know, simple. Actually, I'll put, <clears throat> just put the date here: uh, twenty-one zero three twenty-five simple room and it's just going to be zero one so you can also go into png actually png is maybe better because uh it's uh then the white you will have less artifacts on these sort of white areas okay save and image successfully saved and it's basically here in the folder okay not very impressive but um here it is so this is basically just a png image uh, meaning it's a raster image and you can just open it in Photoshop and you can basically also use it as a, you can use it as a, you know, um, like in Photoshop, you can kind of use it as a sort of guide to maybe start, um, you know, layouting, like do a collage or so on. So you can, you can export these lines for sure uh, directly out. Again, this is not vector graphics, this is a raster graphics. So, um, but again, if you use, if you use it in Photoshop, this is, this is enough because it gives you good enough guides. Um, Okay, that's the first one. Then if you go here under, for example, shaded, you can do the same thing. You capture the file, also very boring room, but we'll try to make it more interesting, simple room. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's do a few more. So I go to maybe rendered. Now uh, this rendered actually looks very weird. Um, so you might not, that's not, yeah, because the kind of light is coming down, but it's not really that nice. Um, because this render view cannot really give us nice uh, nice results. Um, so we will we will then maybe skip this one. Actually, let me see what happens if I say, yeah, I think this one will not look that good. But we'll do kind of a proper proper render. Then it should look better. Okay, then um, maybe technical. So the same thing as wireframe, but um, the, um, uh, the lines are hidden here. Uh, so we get kind of dashed lines. You capture the file, okay. Number four, okay. And then um, there are a few other ones, but for example, um, Arctic should be okay. You capture the file, okay. Kind of gives you this sort of a yeah, cake, <laughs> cake kind of look, white sugar look. Okay, zero five. And then there are some other options like this V-Ray Interactive, uh, which kind of renders the scene and then you can sort of move, move it around. But first we have to set up uh, the scene properly in V-Ray in order. And I think it might be quite slow. So I would recommend, uh, you know, use at your own co uh, caution. Okay, so this is the uh, wireframe, simple shaded, um, simple, uh, this is like rendered, but it doesn't really look that, that nice. Uh, then this, uh, what is the technical? And then uh, this kind of, um, what's the name? Yeah, the Arctic mode. Okay, so these are kind of very simple, basically screenshots from, from Rhino, but sometimes even these are, uh, these are sort of okay, depending on what you need. If you do a diagram, 
uh, these are uh, can also be useful. Can can you show us how to add a light source to this room? Yes. So um, <laughs> patience. So I'm that that's what I'm kind of getting at. Okay. Uh, so um, let's actually first uh, let's first uh, open. Um, so we have to make sure. So let's first uh, open this um, V-Ray asset editor, and we can use just the normal Sun that comes with um, um, uh, like like a Sun object uh, that uh, is sort of set by default. And if you want to add your own lights, I can show you that how you can do it uh, here in the render tools. Um, you can you set for example this create directional light, or so the Sun is basically. Directional light, meaning light that um, has parallel lines. Um, so the light light rays are parallel. That's of course different than, for example, having a point light or like a spotlight, or which uh, where the lines are not parallel. So if you want to kind of simulate another light, we would use this directional light. But there is already a uh, sun set up in the scene, so we will use that one. Okay. If you go to re-ray. Uh, ah, well, actually, first you have to make sure that if you go in under render. Current render, you have to make sure that V-Ray for Rhino is selected. So there's this Brazil, which I don't even know if it works in Rhino 7, um, but it is still, I think, installed on all the computers. And there's this default kind of Rhino render, which is a little bit um, less sophisticated, but I think you can do also quite some stuff there. Mm. But V-Ray for Rhino <clears throat> needs to be selected. Okay, and then uh, you would go to V-Ray here, Asset Editor. Okay, and the asset editor, um, that's kind of where all the con controls are. So V-Ray comes with uh, materials pre-installed. So the materials that I gave you last time are actually extracted from here. Um, so all this kind of concrete, like all the folders that I gave you, they're basically these, those are the same materials. Um, I kind of ripped them literally from, um, from V-Ray here. But of course, materials themselves, they here they kind of, uh, they combine all the maps or so you have reflective map, pump map, diffuse map, they're all sort of, um, uh, they're all combined here. Uh, so <clears throat> it is like a, a bit more smart way of sort of combining or creating materials. You can also use these and start creating your own materials. So you can kind of take, for example, some concrete and sort of start uh, create your kind of a custom type of concrete, changing some properties and so on. So you can actually customize uh, materials as well. Okay, um, so here are the, um, uh, the materials and I have to click this arrow here. And if you click this arrow here, uh, these are going to be, I think, render options or something like that. I'm gonna come up here. Okay, uh, lights, okay. So lights come here, there's the sun, some questions can soon get V-Ray for free somewhere. Uh, yeah, let's handle this licensing. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if so, not really responsible for licensing, but um, at all the computers, they are for sure um, available. You, you have to check the website from um, MAD or so, uh, my creative design. It's this the exclusive dist distributor of, or licensor of um, this kind of, Rhino products or uh, these licenses for Finland. So um, you have to check on their website what they say. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me just see here. Okay. The light is here. This Rhino document sun uh, is set up. And uh, basically, uh, actually, one more thing. Um, and uh, V-Ray acetator. Okay. So here, if I go under settings, um, here I can, so very important, I have to set up basically the size, um, the size of my um, output or, so here I can set the quality, set to medium, uh, maybe, let's put it to high, I think it should be okay. Um, and I can put engine, so from CPU to GPU, so I can let it calculate on my graphics card, depending on, uh, I have some kind of quadro, should be maybe okay. So it's gonna be a little bit faster, or quite faster actually, render output. Um, and here you basically set um, the output of the frame. Now, don't be confused if you go here in Rhino. So um, on the right, there's like a current render. There's like properties, layers, current render. Um, this is, these all of these 
options here are over overwritten or they are not really taken into account. It is uh, these options here that are in this VRA asset editor. Or, so this is quite a low resolution, but that's fine for us because um, uh, during this tutorial, it's good to do things fast. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it. This quality is set to high, GPU. And um, yeah, we can actually try already now. So if I go here under, so again, there's these tabs here, standard, la la la, and at the end there's the render tools. And the first one here is render. So let me see actually how it looks like if I just press it. Okay, so because the Rhino Sun is already set up, uh, there is some sun that kind of, and, and also the sky il illumination. So the, somehow the sky is, um, it's called al albedo or the, the light that um, the sky dome is sort of emitting. And uh, because of that, I think there is no actually direct sunlight coming into this room, but this albedo or the environmental light um, sort of comes from up, uh, comes from the sky and basically enters the room. So I tested this a little bit before because I wanted to have kind of a very soft, um, very soft light that sort of comes in. Okay, let's see actually how fast this is. It should be, uh, yeah, you can also, let me see how fast this is. Okay, you can see that the picture is kind of slowly recon re reconstructing and uh, rendering image. This should, okay, finish. So it's not really that long, it's like less, less than a minute. And I can then go here under save current channel. And uh, let me put it under simple room and you can put it under six. Okay. And the folder, it will give it this because it's, um, I think it will give it a weird name or uh, uh, is it, it's, um, no, oh, actually it's okay name. Okay, so, and of course this view is a bit, um, is a bit different because the resolution was um, smaller. So it's a, it's the same view, but um, the kind of image is sort of cut out or, and again, this, this is all white. So it looks kind of, it's sort of very soft, but it's basically, there's not really much happening here because we didn't really set any, uh, any materials, but this would be already sort of like a first, um, first render that you can kind of do and we'll do kind of a few more. Okay, uh, there's, this is with the light coming in. Okay, uh, the sun and let's play a little bit. There was actually a question in the chat, let's see. Okay, there's some discussion about <laughs> licensing. Okay, so here, um, if you don't want, so if you're in Rhino, um, if the rendering is taking too long, you can always stop it here, you kind of stop rendering and um, you don't have to wait until it finishes. Okay, let me actually see, um, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's set up our own custom light, <clears throat> custom light. So I can go here again, render tools, uh, there's a create directional light. And then says here, and I have to start from end of the light direction vector or so where do I want my light vector to sort of end and maybe I want to end it kind of maybe here and here the start or so maybe I want to have something like this would be the start. Okay. And I can now change the color of this guy. So I can go here properties, maybe display color, put it to, for example, magenta. And so this uh, all the light rays will now be parallel to this line here. And I can move this around somewhere because um, if the, all the arrays are parallel, then it doesn't really matter where this object is or. Um, Okay, and uh, let's go back in. So if I go again under set view, uh, room from the center, then under asset manager, again, asset editor, sorry. Um, I can sort of turn off the, um, now I have this directional light, maybe I can try that one, but then I might want to turn off the sun because I'm not sure how, how it looks like if it's, uh, if it overlays. So now I kind of have sort of two lights or one light and one sun. So maybe I want to dis turn this one off. And I don't really know how to turn it off, except maybe here, if you go under panels, you can put a sun panel. Panels again, 
we put it back, sun comes here, and then uh, sun options on, kind of turn it off here. I think that should, oh, I think that should kind of uh, <clears throat> um, take it, take it out, okay. Yeah, I think should maybe take it out. Let's see how this looks like. So I can just set rendering. Now the scene should look different. Let me see. Okay, yeah, I think the sun is now off and the light, uh, so the, the light is the one that I set or so there's a, uh, we can compare the two, two images. So the, I set it so that it kind of, the light sort of shines, shines on the box, kind of behind the box. And um, yeah, I mean, the, I hope it's also clear, you know, kind of the, the reason why these renders look way better than um, sort of some quick sort of fixes because uh, V-Ray is simulating how the light bounces off in the room. Or so the light falls onto the surface and it gets diffused or so it kind of dis disperses. And basically the surfaces that are lit up, they in a way emit light or so they become in a way light sources that, themselves. So they start sort of slightly kind of reflecting or basically bouncing the light off. And then this bouncing of the light is a very subtle effect, but that basically gives a, a lot more realism to the scene because that's actually what um, how light behaves or it, it doesn't just kind of fall onto the surface and illuminate it, but it kind of bounces off. And uh, uh, V-Ray is also calculating this, these bounces and I think uh, maybe I think you can set that somewhere. So you can set something like the three or four bounces or so. Um, okay, here I can save this again. So simple room six, seven. Okay, I can just compare it quickly. So this was with the sun and this one was with this sort of, um, uh, this one was with this sort of a light that I set up. Of. Yeah, these two. Okay, so you can, of course, set up different light sources from inside and so on. You can also make the objects themselves emit light by setting the material. So I can show you also how to do that. This one, this object is, uh, this box is now kind of emitting light uh, because we set this um, emissive material, meaning the material itself kind of emits light. Okay, okay so uh, let's try to now add some materials here. So this one we turn off, we go back into Rhino. Just save it. Okay, and um, let's actually see how we do this. Uh, so this sun tab, maybe we can just turn this all off. Okay, so now, um, um, mm, 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 like the first thing that we can do, we can, for example, apply some kind of concrete material to basically all the objects that are here, or so I can just select all of them. Go again under asset editor. I go here under materials, click this arrow, and now I can choose uh, choose, an, uh, choose a material. So maybe uh, let's say concrete, where is it? Concrete, and then uh, I had some nice ones, maybe some nice reflective ones, concrete ref reflective B1. Okay, so I have to say right click, and I can say apply to selection. So now this is added. And basically all the objects that I selected, they have that material. If I go to rendered, I can actually see how it, how it looks like. But uh, we have to adjust the mapping a bit. So you can see there's something weird happening here on the edges or on these kind of sides. So the mapping is a little bit weird. And uh, yeah, because there are of course different ways that you can apply the texture onto the materials. So we are gonna try to do this now, uh, like adjust, uh, separately for all of them. Some questions, stretching, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you basically have to kind of, um, uh, you have to set how the material is mapped. So let me actually first hide this one here. So that's kind of also hmm, not really complicated, but if I, for example, select this, uh, this one here on the bottom and I go under properties, uh, there's a tab here called texture mapping. So this texture mapping basically tells me how is the um, how is the texture map texture mapping yeah how is the texture mapped uh, show mapping actually let me see 
apply box mapping. Okay, so I want to do like a box mapping and um, because like it's important to know the scale of my texture. Also, if I can, I don't know, I'm doing it in between. Uh, there's a number here at the texture. It says concrete reflective B01 and it says two meters. Uh, this means that this texture, like the full texture is actually two meters. Um, this is a square that is two meters, um, two by two meters uh, big. Uh, and that's important to know because that means that I can, um, if I'm setting my, if I say I'm applying kind of box mapping here, and if I set the box now here, I actually want this box to be um, in this, I want this box to be kind of um, these two meters are so 2000 by 2000 by 2000 capped yes. Okay, not sure if this worked. So now this is, this is, um, this is in the correct scale or so if I measure in Rhino here, like a distance, uh, because I've already built my model in meters or so, or in millimeters, but it's something like 10 by 10. So um, I want to put my texture in the correct scale here. Or so if I measure here, this is now, you know, what is this, 80 centimeters. Uh, and in this texture or this material has this scale. Or, and the box mapping just means that it will be applied on uh, all three sides. So top of well, all six sides of the cube, the same way or so here a little bit uh, kind of uh, of course the texture is re repetitive or so it kind of repeats but basically now uh, these three sides are mapped correctly and I want to do this for every object so if I select again this object here I can say apply box mapping maybe this is where I start and then I can just say uh, again 2000 2000 2000 cap yes okay so now this one has the same scale also looks a bit boring but so it is and uh, I will do the same for the cube. So apply box mapping. So again, properties, texture mapping, apply box mapping, and maybe I start here. And again, this 2000 by 2000 by 2000, cap yes, okay. And the only one that is left is the, I have to say show, it is the, the roof. And there the same thing, box mapping, click, 2000, enter, enter, yes, okay. So now in theory, the mapping is correct. <clears throat> yeah, now in theory, the mapping is correct. And I can go again here to set view, room from the center. Now I don't really see my box anymore. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see this cube because there are kind of no really shadows, but I can render this or so I can render tools again, render. And the view is the same, so actually kind of with comparable results. Now everything became a bit darker um, because the, um, these surfaces are <clears throat> absorbing. So this concrete surface is made to, um, it's designed in a way to absorb light or so kind of the whole, the whole room is now darker because um, before I worked with sort of white emissive material and here it's just dark. So everything is a bit darker, but we can kind of play play around a little bit with these settings. Yeah, so this is just a, this is just a concrete room. Okay, I'm just, okay, very patient, finished. I'll just save this um, under, again, simple room, seven, eight. Okay, and uh, yeah, we're gonna take a, what is now 2.10? Okay, uh, I want to just do a few more and then we can maybe also take a break. Uh, so I'm just showing you here what you got. Simpler room, this one here. Okay, so this is the, this is again, this is with the sun. So there's no direct light, there's no direct sun coming in, but just a um, reflection from the sky. Then this one is with, uh, sun is off, I think. And it's just this sort of directional light coming in. And then this is with the material sort of rendered. Um, and um, uh, yeah, that's it kind of the, uh, that's it. And maybe we can now just uh, sort of try to do a few more examples. Let me actually see a bit here if I go to view ray asset editor. Okay, so here under uh, render, basically here you can set uh, you can set the stuff or so um, let's see there's a camera so you can change for example the 
you can have this depth depth of field, meaning the, um, it simulates this um, um, like a photography effect where objects that are very um, so if you have a very high like long depth of field, that means everything is sharp. I think if it's short, that means the objects that are uh, far away become blurry and so on. Or so you kind of have things focused as well. That field is here. There are some effects. Vignetting, that's like kind of a Instagram effect where the uh, edges are sort of darker. Um, environment, uh, background, yeah, you can, if you have, for example, the background. So here we don't really have um, sort of Rhino background, but you can set the background to be transparent. So for example, if you have a window, you can see outside, then you can say transparent. And then in um, uh, in Photoshop, you can just kind of put something else there or so like a view from the window. Okay, this material override, just if you set it, uh, and if you kind of render again, uh, it will just sort of render everything. It will just kind of remove all the, all the mat material settings. So that's, you can use if you want to do like a quick test uh, of just a kind of light and uh, directions, but basically you don't want the materials to be rendered and it's a bit faster. Uh, so you can just quickly here override all the materials. And again, if you want to stop to render, you can go here and just stop. I think it should work. After a while it stops, okay. So we removed uh, the swarm. I actually don't know what swarm is. Um, yeah, the stuff is here also, ray trace, um, global illumination. Um, so caustics is this effect. Um, I think I was explaining it uh, last time to somebody. I'll just quickly try to explain you what caustics is. Caustics V-ray R. So that's the, um, uh, you can, if you have curved glass, caustics is basically this effect uh, where the um, light is sort of um, focused or so um, get light kind of, it gets refracted from the, um, gets refracted um, through this curved glass. So it's transparent, but basically it gets refracted. So some areas then become more focused, become lighter and the other areas become darker. Um, so they're kind of, they look like shadows. And um, this is quite computationally intensive, but it basically, if you want to do product rendering of um, glass, or maybe you have a curved glass in your project, you have to simulate these characteristics. Or so that's, the, that's that effect there. You can kind of turn it on and off here. Max photons, okay, volumetric environment, render elements. Yeah, switches, I don't know what these are. So you can kind of turn on and off some stuff here. Uh, and yeah, exposure value. Yeah, you can also change for your lights. You can change the, um, uh, the in, in, in intensity or so you can uh, make the light more intense or less intense and you can change the color. Or so actually let's try to do that. Let's, we have this directional light. Let's try to change color, for example, to red. Could red work? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's go to red and um, intensity, let's ramp it up to maybe five. Okay, shadow radius options. Yeah, there's some other things here. Okay, let's, let's try with that. Okay, so this is now the, the directional light that we set up is, is just red and it's more intensive. Uh -huh, I just realized there is actually some sun coming in still or so there's the light and there's uh, actually the white sun okay so you can set the kind of colors of your light and um, this is basically how you simulate all the <clears throat> this is how you simulate all the um, also all the kind of lights so if you have for example a lamp you would basically um, make it sort of emit light and then set the color of that light and this is how you can again simulate the interior lighting Okay, uh, and um, yeah, let me actually just, um, yeah, let me actually just stop this one. I want to render something, but I want to just show you a few more tricks and then we can render it all at the same time. So maybe actually let me just, we can leave, the, leave this red color there. Uh, let's take this box and uh, I just want to kind of multiply it and so I just copy pasted it. I want to put it kind of inside, maybe here. 
and uh, maybe I want to mirror it also. Just want to add some light effects mirror around here. Okay. Okay, so I have these two cubes here and maybe I can just kind of move them a bit up. Okay. Okay, and I want to create them. Um, I want to make them emissive or so. Um, <clears throat> I want to make them kind of emit light. So I go here to asset editor. Um, this we can actually leave. Actually, no, let's leave this. Let's put this to white intensity. Maybe I kind of increase it a bit. Um, here, material. Okay, so I can select this cube here. There is a uh, emissive here, uh, material, so that basically makes the material uh, that emits light. And maybe this one here will be blue. So I can go right click, apply to selection. And I, I can do the same thing with uh, box here, uh, maybe super red, or so there's going to be blue and red. Right click, apply to selection. Okay. So now I have sort of a have sort of a um, light, like a red cube or red cube and blue cube. And let's maybe just quickly try to render that. And um, then we can also take a break after that. So again, uh, set view, room from center. And uh, two, 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 I'll just save this. And um, that's the render. Okay, so I removed this red light, it didn't, didn't look that nice. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's just save this and so number nine. Okay, and then without really rendering, uh, okay, let's do that. Uh, maybe I can just kind of hide them. Okay, I want to just my one last example. I want to do like a curved concrete wall, and then maybe we can take a like a short break. Um, so to make it a bit easier, go here to shaded. So standard modeling tools, I just want to do, um, I just want to do like a simple, oh, uh, top. okay. I just want to do like a sort of a simple curve. Okay. So I want to do like a bit of a sort of a, curved wall like this. Um, and uh, this is now done yeah, on top of here, perfect. And I can just kind of copy it. So go from here to here. Okay, and now again, we can set, we can do this. Um, well, actually, I can maybe try to uh, just mirror around Again, this axis here, I want to do a loft surface. So which one is which, this one is here. Okay, and I want to flip this uh, flip, okay. Now I can do loft, so it's important that these two curves are, are, it's important that these two curves are the same length. If I select them, if I write there, they run in the same direction and I can do loft. So I can do loft, so I can create a surface between these two. Oh, uh, I think I can flip maybe one. Okay, somehow. Okay, I can loft, uh, something weird happened. Okay, yeah, but uh, okay, it's not that nice. I expected a bit nicer results, but um, yeah, maybe we can leave it like this. Okay, so this is basically um, some kind of a curved wall. And uh, if I go here, here to render it, uh, this is now just some kind of a diffuse material. So nothing spectacular, but I can turn it into a, um, I can turn it into a proper, a proper concrete. So I can go here uh, again under, I can select it. Uh, sorry, I can select the surface here. Go under a render or actually V-Ray asset editor, find some nice concrete. 
uh, maybe mm, maybe this one here, apply to selection. Um, okay, actually, yeah. Or maybe even something nicer, really like something like this, apply to selection. Okay, yeah, something like this. Um, and um, yeah, let me actually do the same thing. Let's see if this changes something. Uh, texture mapping, box mapping, starting from here. And then what was that actually? Uh, the size is actually four meters or so. Again, box mapping here, 4,000. Enter, 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 enter. Okay, so now the size is correct. So it's um or the <clears throat> the texture is sort of scaled to our Rhino room or <clears throat> Rhino units, and um, yeah, maybe I can <clears throat> I can actually put that uh, just under render. This is the result. Let me actually save it again as our example. Uh, eight nine number ten. Okay, and I'll show it. Okay, here it is. So you can imagine that, you know, if you, um, again, this is quite dark. Let's let's take it into Photoshop and see if we can improve it a bit. Again, this is also a, quite a low resolution. So you can see that the room is actually quite dark, but um, we can probably improve this a little bit. I mean, this is so shiny that with my glasses, uh, I, I can't even see kind of if, if there is anything in the room or not, but you can see kind of very subtle reflections on the floor. So that's good. That's kind of all the information that we need that we can sort of use to pimp up. And um, yeah, I mean, you can imagine that like you cannot really do this. Or it would be a bit harder to do this, for example, in Photoshop, if you would uh, have like a texture and um, like a concrete texture and you would have irregular wall and you would now try to sort of um, kind of adjust this kind of to fake it. It, it might be like very, very hard. Uh, if you have a flat wall, it's it's easier or um, the situation is just more manageable. But as soon as you have, thing, have something that is a bit more complicated, uh, it, it becomes a bit, I mean, just that that much harder to do it uh, to sort of, let's say, fake it in Photoshop. So um, yeah, then kind of uh, rendering and then maybe taking it to Photoshop uh, uh, is, is maybe, a, maybe a way to go for this. Okay, so we'll do, use that as an example. Uh, let me just this can turn off. Uh, yeah, you can adjust some stuff here on the bottom. I see uh, in this V-ray frame buffer, but uh, let's turn this off. So I will just um, trying to bring my okay. Here it is. I'll just save it. I also give you this file as well, a very simple file. Uh, and let's actually open Photoshop. Let's see if we can kind of just adjust this image a little bit. I had also another example, uh, this one here with stone arches, but it's basically the same. So it's just another example that I used to practice a little bit, but I chose to, uh, the room is a little bit, I think, better. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, this is also <laughs> another example of uh, con another concrete wall that I did when I was practicing. It's a bit more, um, a bit more straight. I actually like this one that we did now uh, better. Okay. Okay, so yeah, let's just kind of uh, plug it directly in. So we can just drag and drop. It should appear. Okay, here it is. And this is, a, yeah, this is a PNG. So let's see what we can do. So again, uh, I'm gonna repeat maybe some stuff that I maybe you already know with alt you can kind of quickly zoom in you hold alt and go with the mouse key you can quickly go in and out uh okay so i know that usually you can do something uh, something is weird at the corners now i think it's fine layers okay so um fit on screen great uh this is white uh this one here is black. Okay, so let's see. 
there are these different, uh, if you go to image, you can sort of adjust this tone of the image and contrast and color kind of automatically. But I'm not sure like how well these work, but we can try. So you go to image, auto tone. Okay, so you see it kind of go back. Here it is my, uh, so this is the original one and then auto tone kind of just brings it a little bit up. Then let's see um, auto contrast. Uh, you can't really see anything. And let's try um, auto color. Okay, so it's kind of, yeah, it makes the a very, very slight kind of adjustment to the, to the sort of color. Okay, but that's kind of the, that's, I think we can do also better than that. If I go under image, uh, adjustments, so, you know, brightness contrast, or so here I can maybe, you know, increase the brightness or uh, contrast, yeah, brightness and contrast. Okay, so I can use these two to sort of to bring up or to bring out basically the, the room a little bit. So increasing the, sh yeah, increasing kind of the difference between the contrast is um, kind of uh, increasing the difference between the lightest areas and the darkest areas. So depending on kind of what you need, see if I reduce a bit the contrast and go a bit up the brightness, uh, it, you, I can kind of suddenly see the room. Uh, so that's for sure one, one option. And the other one that I would like to check, uh, adjustments, okay. And then the other one is levels. I think I showed it already once before. Because I used already this auto tone, uh, there's some gaps here happening. So that's the histogram. And basically uh, um, brightness and contrast adjustments, they are also just kind of in a way uh, adjusting these, um, uh, adjusting the levels of the image, but in a bit more con controlled way. And um, yeah, again, I'm not really an expert, but usually in this type of image, I would kind of just play a little bit around with these values. Uh, so obviously there's like a lot of um, dark tones in this image. So uh, we leave them in, but we move this kind of a gray to the mid value. We try to move it a little bit more toward, um, toward the dark one. So we kind of lighten up the whole image, maybe something like this. Okay, I just realized now that this kind of does more or less the same thing as brightness and contrast. Let me just go back again, one more try. Brightness contrast. Okay, maybe a bit brighter and yeah, something like this. Maybe we put this to 100 and it's hard to know if we need to increase or decrease the contrast. Maybe something like this. Okay, uh, again, this is a low resolution image, so it's not really, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, we are for sure losing some, uh, you're losing some levels or so you see here, um, this bright area gets kind of burnt when we increase the uh, contrast. Let's actually try just one more time. Levels, <clears throat> if I just, so if I don't move, if I don't move this light area here, then I will not burn also the, the lights here, but I can move just um, the middle the middle one. I can just move it a little bit toward the, toward the inside. Maybe go a little bit just here. 1.8. Okay, and then maybe saturate uh, this uh, hue saturation. You know, you can kind of in decrease a bit the saturation or increase depending on what you want to. Um, you want to kind of work a bit with colors or not. But that's basically uh, maybe decrease a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of now our um, a bit sort of heavily, a bit slightly adjusted image. Um, makes it a bit more even, I'll just say it as 11. Okay. So yeah, the kind of the, maybe the best, best, best that we could do, but I think it's kind of clear now how you can sort of play around in Rhino and V-Ray with materials, types or types of materials, light conditions, and then basically in Photoshop also how you can uh, start um, uh, start adjusting things.